name. That's my baby. Test. I'm, I'm on. There you are. Whew. Good morning. Good morning. This is your second week of Human Relations Sunday, and so I want to encourage you to give if you did not give last week, or give even if you gave last week. I mean, well, how can that hurt anything? I don't think it can. Are there any other announcements? Yes, Peg. Joyful Noise is singing next Sunday, and the kids, you have a snack already there, so parents, you guys get to go straight to the fellowship hall, and the kids get to go upstairs and have um, a snack up there already prepared. So are, are there any other announcements? I kind of have a praise thing. Maybe I shouldn't say it, but I really... Number one, I praise God to see all of you here. It's been kind of crummy weather out have, outside. Have you noticed that? How many here had to shovel their way out of their home? Yeah. And so we've had that. But I, so I praise God that you're all here. But what I really praise God for, too, is the success of a new women's circle. Yes. So not only do we have the Rebecca circle, not only do we have the Lydia circle, but now we have the Hannah circle. And I like, I love, um, is it alliteration? Where it's the same frontwards and backwards? So Hannah is coming and going. And I think that that's a good description of how young women 
are. They're so busy that they're coming and going, but they're going to make a time to be together. So, if there are no other announcements, I, um, I just think we need to hear from our choir. What do you think? Choir, come forward.
Join with me in the opening prayer, please. Come to Christ, that living stone rejected by the world, but in God's sight, chosen and precious. We have responded to Christ's call and seek to be built in a spiritual house. A living reminder of God's presence on earth. Once we were no people. Once we were no people, but now we are God's people, called out of the darkness into God's marvelous light. Therefore, we sing with the church in all ages. Blessed be, be your name, name O God, God, our Redeemer. Redeemer. By your By mercy, mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Our Psalter reading this morning is from Psalm chapter 27. It's also a, re a responsive reading. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in the Lord's temple. The Lord will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble, will conceal me under the cover of his tent and will set my set me high upon a rock and to my head shall be lifted up above my enemies round about me and I will offer sacrifices in the Lord's tent with shouts of joy I will sing and make melody to the Lord hear O Lord when I cry aloud be gracious to me and answer me Come, my heart said, seek the Lord's face, your face, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me, turn not your servant away in anger, for you have been my help. Cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. If the mother and mother should forsake me, the Lord would take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe not violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your head take courage. Wait for the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Stand, if you will, for our first hymn. Page 557 in the hymnal, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.
each other flows the sympathizing tear when we asunder part it gives us inward pain but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Now if I can have the children come forward. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, girls. You look beautiful in your dresses. How are we? Good. Good. What school do you go to? DG Elementary. DG Elementary. What does DG stand for? Dyser Geneseal. You oh North Tama. Hey, good good for you. Yes. I know Dyser Geneseo is a mouthful. Now I know why you say DG. So are you all in the same class? No. Well, I should hope not. Um so how many here are in the fourth grade? Two, are you in the same class in the fourth grade? Are there, is there another class of fourth graders? Okay, so you're in whose class, J Justice? Oh, Cardi. Miss Cardi's class. All right. How many third graders have I here? Okay. Are you all in the same class? No. no. Well, especially you're not. Um, <laughs> so you're not in the same class? No. All right. Second graders. How many second graders? Oh, oh, okay. Are you both in the same class? No. All right. First graders. You're in your own class. Okay. Kindergartners. All right. Listen here. You're all in different classes. Some of you are in the same class, but but at the same time, you're all in different levels. And yet, what did you tell me? What school do you go to? DG Elementary. So you're in this umbrella that makes you, makes you all one, and yet you are in different places. And that's, that's to be expected. Guess what? We all come to this church, which is Dysart United Methodist Church, Yet, even in our spiritual life and growth, we're all in different places. Does that make us not all one? Just because we're in different places, does it make us not all under the same umbrella? It makes us under the same umbrella. Okay, we, we are. We're under the same umbrella because we all belong here, we all belong to one another, and we all have a connection with this place, despite whatever age level we're on. Yes, sir? It's an umbrella. An umbrella? You don't know what an umbrella is? No. Okay. Yes, you're under the, you are under the umbrella. Okay. You don't need to hide under the umbrella. Okay. I wish I could move like he does. Um, all right. Yes? Yeah, there you are. You are his umbrella. All right. That is kind of what we're going to, the adults are going to learn today that are here again today. And I think they already know it, but we're going to talk about it again. And so in talking about it again, we, um, we realize that we are connected one with the other, just as you are all connected one with the other, not just because you're siblings, but also because you all belong to the same, air, same place. All right, my little munchkins, um, let's pray. What do you say we pray before we do the big dive in? 
We're going to do the age thing again. Oh, I know. Yeah, I heard that grumble. I heard a grumble right there. Remember, we're all in this together. All right. Father, we thank you for, for the connectiveness, the, the conduit that runs through all of us, but especially our children, as they understand that they belong one to the other. We ask that you go with them in spirit and in truth and with their teachers as they lead them in children's church and may everything be done to your glory in Jesus' name. And they all said, all right, youngest, 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 you go first. Pick one. No. Kira, Kira, come here, sweetie. Kira, pick one. Okay, who's in kindergarten? Who's in first grade? All right, second grade. Second graders? Oh, we're digging. Second graders who want to make a choice. Okay, third graders. And fourth graders. No, you only one. Did you get overlooked? I'm so sorry. Your preschool. There you go. Good thing we had something left for our good preschooler. All right. I got to get up, don't I? All right. Our scripture this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Now I encourage you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, agree with each other and don't be divided into rival groups. Instead, be restored with the same mind and the same purpose. My brothers and sisters, Chloe's people gave me some information about you that you're fighting with each other. What I mean is this, that each of you of who says, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Cephas, I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in Paul's name? Thank God that I didn't baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that nobody can say that you were baptized in my name. Oh, I baptized the house of Stephanus too. Otherwise, I don't know if I baptized anyone else. Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news. And Christ didn't send me to preach the good news with clever words, so that Christ's cross won't be emptied of its meaning. The message of the cross is foolishness for those who are being destroyed, but it is the power of God for those of us who are being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Moving on to our next hymn, also in the red hymnal 558, We Are the Church. Please stand.
You may be seated. I don't know this very good, but I can remember it from when I was a child. My mother would go like this, okay, and she would say, here's this here's the church, here's the steeple, here's the doors, open the doors, and here's all the people. Yes, so I should have done that with the kids. Um, But I, I wasn't real sure what I was doing, so probably not a good thing. Let me pray. Father, when I hear the words of this text, I am reminded that God has the heart of a parent who loves their children equally, who hears their voices as a mother hears and knows her own children's cries and laughter. Make it such that when we see each other, we see each other as our favorite sibling. In Christ's holy name, amen. Anytime Paul writes anything, there's the in-your-face thing, and then there's the underlying thing. And so his frontal lobe meaning is... And then there is sort of like that synapsing of the nerves across the membrane to the deepest parts of the brain to arrive at the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say. So the frontal lobe says, get along. Get along. But the rest of the story is there is power in community. And of course, when this was being written in 50 Common Era, they were needing a lot of power. They were needing a lot of community. In fact, this is written in Corinth, a letter to Corinth. It's not written in Corinth. It's a letter to Corinth, which is a long way from Jerusalem. And that's not necessarily where Paul was, because one of the really great things about the Roman Empire is it made roads. And so everybody was dispersed. And quite often trade just greatly changed during that time, where Villages were kind of a microcosm of their own um, abilities, so all needs were met in that little microcosm. But then roads created commerce, and with commerce, the Jews were dispersed. And quite often you hear about, you know, a merchant took his servants. They weren't servants, they were slaves. And so he would take those slaves, and quite often they were Jewish people who were paying off a debt or had been abandoned. And so they would take them as their slaves, and they would take them wherever commerce was. And so there there would have been in Corinth a great hub of Jewish people, as well as Gentiles. And of course, we know by this time it has been established that this gospel is not just for the Jew, but the Gentile as well. Thank God for that. And so, um, I don't have my notebook here, so I'm doing this in my way that I do things. And as this is barely into that, this First Corinthians from this Paul, this letter from Paul and, and his good friend, friend Sosthenes, who actually may have been in that first century, he may have been somebody who, who was, a, was part of the Roman Empire, and he was converted. And so he is a man of power, and so they are listening well to him. And he's got some organization skills, to, because let's face it, to take up a, a fledgling church, a fledgling group of people, somebody's got to take the lead in this. And so he did, and he did it well. So Corinth is also the, the hub of Greek lifestyles of the rich and famous, the educated and the arts. It's a real happening place. And so Paul is privy to the great things that are going on in the church of Corinth as well. Word gets out. In verse 7, Paul says that all spiritual gifts are being revealed in this group of people. The word of knowledge, increased faith, the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, prophecy, the discernment of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. We all have that memorized, right? Not. Um, I don't. I can see somebody nodding that they do, but I don't. I know that they they exist, and I know that I have some, but I don't have all. And, but when we come together as a group, as they came together as a group, 
someone had at least one, if not multiples, of these spiritual gifts. And they are, pre they are present. They exist as a result of having turned, individuals having turned their lives over to Christ. But even in the midst of everyone doing and supporting one another with these spiritual gifts, they begin to divide. Imagine that. That never happens in our world, does it? On the surface, they have everything going for them. They're growing, they're growing spiritually and in number. But then, being people and all, they begin to look at some and at others and say amongst themselves, who baptized you? Now, if you think that's odd, <laughs> I, um, as a pastor, I actually love these stories, but I have had people say to me, well, so-and-so baptized me. And I was like, okay. You know, and what, and I don't think that you are ever saying that it was because of that person you were baptized, or that person made it different, but you are marking time. This is my time when I was baptized. This is my time. I do remember the, the person who baptized me, but I was 26 years old. I had kind of, you know, hopefully a little memory going on at that time. And so I do remember, I do remember the place and the time. But quite often for a baby, they're only hearing that story secondhand. But these people have been baptized. Was it Paul, Apollo, or Cephas, or Christ? And by the way, Jesus never baptized anyone. It's not recorded that he ever did. And they begin to huddle in their corners. You know, they, they begin drawing lines. Boy, do we hate drawing lines. And they think that their way of doing things, their gifts are greater than another's. And why this focus on baptism? In our Wednesday discussion group, Bible study, someone asked if they baptized in the Old Testament. Well, you know, that obviously made me, I immediately answered, well, yes. And then I had to think about that. When did they baptize? And yes, they did. Leviticus talks about Aaron entering the meeting tent, taking off his linen clothes, and he goes into the holy area, bathes, comes out, and puts on his priestly garb. And then when he presents himself to the people, it is his way of making reconciliation for himself and for the people. So it's not individual baptism, it's his baptism that reconciles the people. Baptism is reconciliation. If we read through on page, I don't know, probably about 26 to 31 in our hymnals in the front, you're going to see that the baptism liturgy is about reconciling parents to their commitment to raise their children in church with godly principles, the stories of Christ. It is reconciling, it's kind of like a restart button every time we go into a baptism. So as a congregation, when you affirm a baby's baptism through a prayer, you are reconciling yourself as well again. So this reconciliation is an important aspect of, um, of baptism. And so I like to think of reconciliation as a checkbook. Anybody here ever reconciled your checkbook? Anybody here let the bank do that? Um, <laughs> okay. I look at the bottom thing, yeah, that must be right. And I just, no, I should admit that. Um, it is that we receive the income as God's will and forgiveness and his love. And our outgo is our control, our will, our sin. But we also offer up, we pay out honor when we honor God. It's pretty simple. Remember the Ten Commandments? Remember what the first four are? All about what we're going to do with God. The next six, all we're going to do with other people. 
So the first thing we got to get right is our relationship with God. That reconciliation. And then the other time we hear about um, baptism is in 2 Kings, where Naaman, a tremendous warrior, ends up with a gnarly, bad skin disease. And he hears that Elisha can heal people. And so he goes to Elisha, and Elisha's really busy, and he sends out one of his followers and says, oh, tell him to go dip in the Jordan seven times. And Naaman goes, what? I'm a mighty warrior. I at least deserve some face time with this guy. I mean, what's up with this? He wants me to just go dip in the water. Well, I can go back and dip in the Euphrates. What's the difference between your water and my water? Well, not a blasted thing other than it's obedience. Remember God's will. And so one of his commanders goes, hey, why don't you just do it? I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? And so he does. He goes and he dips seven times and he comes out clean. And then he does an interesting thing. He does get some face time with Elisha. And he said, you name it, I'll give it to you. Look, I'm made whole. I'll give it to you. Whatever you want. And Elisha says, I can't take anything from you. And so they barter. And finally... Naaman says, I want two donkey loads of dirt from this place. And he said, because from here on out, that will be my holy place. And I will no longer sacrifice to foreign gods because I will have the holy place with me. Man, that's powerful. I think about the holy place in our own lives. Where is that? Where is the holy place for you? Sometimes it is church. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I I actually have some people who are not even from our faith who have asked to um, come here, and can they they pray here? And I'm just like, same God, yes, go for it. Um, You know, because it's a holy place. But our holy place is also someplace. Maybe you people who own property, Maybe there's that place that you go. Maybe it's your back patio and you look out or deck and you look out over the fields and you just feel like you're communing with God. And that's what Naaman wants. He wants to take that, what he's got going on here and take it someplace else. Don't we all? Oh, so I've given you Naaman's story. And, but again... It is reconciliation with God and God's will. He just simply, Naaman just simply wanted God's will in his life. But by the first century, after death or into the common era, CE, common era. So often you'll see instead of AD anymore, you see CE, common era. Baptism is not unusual. The Jews practice it as a public declaration of submission to God's will, of reconciling. And of course, we know that John the Baptist came, and what was he doing? He was baptizing people and reconciling them with God. When they would come out, they were without sin, and they were re-reconciled, not just with God, but with their faith, with their community. People, it was an important aspect. So let's go back to Paul and Sosthenes. They really are divided about something that's not important. Getting wet is not important. What is important is the result of getting wet. Reconciliation with God. And if you're reconciled, if you begin to see things through God's eyes, well, then there is a difference. There is no difference, excuse me, between us. Recently, I love this story. Recently, something of importance was brought to my attention about this church. You, us, this church. Someone said that we are a bit of a unicorn. We are rare. And what is rare about us? Our ability to get along. Wow. As someone said recently, you seem to like one another. 
Into that, I would add that you also take care of one another. There is a genuine concern for each other. And then the person added that he, he has always felt very welcome here. That people are happy to make his acquaintance just because he is here. I think the scripture today is talking about belonging. When we are in small group, quite often our conversations go to those we might need to pray for or how someone is doing or where someone lives. Many of you are lifelong desertians. I don't know if that's really a word. And you know the history of people from your childhood and who lived where, when, and how. For those of us who are not here from birth, or at least a minimum of 40 years, those of you that have been here for 40 years, you count as at birth, we outsiders get lost in your Dutch bingo. So in Dutch bingo is, well, Terry, if you know Jim and Jim knows Sarah and Sarah knows John and John knows Kelly, then we must all be related. And that's Dutch bingo. And it's a series of making everything come together and make sense of things. And, but having been here for four and a half years, I'm actually even doing a little of that now, too. I can say, oh, yeah, well, that's so-and-so, and they belong to so-and-so. And, hey, hey, hey. and, um, and I have come to understand really what the underlying thing is that you're saying, and that is that you belong. You belong to each other. But this is what I marvel at. We are an amalgamation of different faiths. If I were to ask anyone to raise their hand and, but I won't, um, and say that, how many of you have been Methodist all your life? How many of you come from the Baptist faith, from the Pentecostal holiness faith, from the Lutheran faith, from the Catholic faith, from, we are an amalgamation. It is rare in a Methodist church that we should have this kind of amalgamation of different faiths. This little church has people of a great diverse backgrounds in religion. So Friday in my ministry interview, our discussion went to what people go to this church. They were interested in this church. And I hesitated because then I remembered that conversation I'd had last Sunday about the man who thought we were a unicorn. And so I hesitated, and then I realized the best word I could give was anyone. Who goes to this church? Anyone. Anyone who desires to walk through those doors is family. Despite where our baptism was performed or by who, we all belong to one another. And we do have the gifts of the Spirit working here. I, I've witnessed that many a time. And we are reconciled with God, but also with each other as we carry one another's joys and concerns. We are a unicorn. I actually cried when I wrote that. It's exciting to be part of a unicorn. In fact, when I was describing this, one of the people on my, the interview team said, can you take this to the conference level? <laughs> I said, only if they all come with me, you know, because we got to do this together, right? I'm nothing without you. We are on the precipice, precipice of, <laughs> of extinction, and we need to preserve what we have. And we do that by expansion and agape love. We do this by answering the call, the call of God on our lives to be Jesus to everyone we meet. Corinth will ha still have some issues in the future. Obviously, they had to write a second book, right? <laughs> second epistle. And we will too. But the most important thing to remember is we belong to one another. We are called, just like those early churches, to belong to one another in love and caring. 
All baptisms are about God's love and caring. I think it was 2019 when I asked Craig Dunlap if he knew the theme song, could play the theme song of Cheers. He said he didn't, but he knew some of the words, and if he were here, I would not make him sing, but I think we are embodying it in the principle of, I want a place where everybody knows my name. If you are live streaming, live streamers, I want to talk to you today. I know you're comfortably in your pajamas or at least your recliner and you're, you're feeling good. And I want to encourage you, though, to attend church, this church, three times in a row. You might be surprised just how much you belong and how much you long to belong and how good it is to have people who know your name. Amen. And now in a spirit of still worship is the spirit of, of giving. And so it is also part of, of who we are. So I ask that our ushers come forward. Well, there was music. I heard somebody's phone go. Do we have anything we can punch in? Oh, I don't want to mess you up. Does anybody want to lead in a camp song? I feel like I should be doing something here. Let's all arise. Father, we do praise you and thank you for this opportunity to give. And give as an expression of the love that we have for you, the love that we have for one another, and the love that we have into our faith. Our faith of knowing that Christ is our redemption. And that we are never far from being heard. Just as you know, hear our voices, you hear our cries, and you hear our laughter. And to that, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, joys and concerns. I think I better get started on this. Yesterday, Stephen Calmer was in Vinton at um, an event and walked out to his car and fell. He broke a hip. And so he, I think, was transported last night from Virginia Gay to Mercy. And so he will undergo surgery as soon as they're able to, to have that happen for him. So there is Stephen Calmer. And then my next one is that yesterday, um, Ron Miller was taken to the hospital. He was unable to speak clearly. So Debbie said they were waiting on, when I spoke to her last night, they were still waiting on, 
on results from some tests. So um, I ask that you lift up Ron Miller as well. Rich Kravka is a healing well, that's a praise, um, from a surgery on his um, bladder. So I, you know, to that I give God the glory. I don't always want to have everything be sad and that. I also ask that you um, pray for John Teal, who's still kind of out from mobility a little bit. Um, he says that Nurse Ratchet is pushing him hard, so his words, not mine. Um, so to that, we, we also ask for prayer for John. And um, I think that covers everyone that I have. So generous God. I would just ask that we um, keep the Lonnie Olendek family in our prayers. Um, his, their oldest son, Matt, went to school with Kristen in that age group, and he was only 55 years old and passed this last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Generous God. Um, Pastor Linda's sermon just really hit home for me. Um, this church family has been my joy in the last two weeks. I thank everybody for their calls, their cards, their visits. So thanks so much, church family. I love you all. Generous God. Um, every year, the UMW, this is from the UMW. We are now the United Women in Faith. But we do a special recognition. And we have somebody in our congregation that has not received their special recognition service pin yet. This person has taken care of our community garden. And he's been very faithful with taking care of that community garden. The um, executive board has noticed what you do for our community garden and for our church. And we would like to present you with a certificate and a pin. Roger Peters. Thank you very much. <laughs> Indeed, he mows lawn and he, yeah, he just makes sure that everything goes like it's supposed to go. So, praise God. Generous God. All right. How's your granddaughter? How's my granddaughter? <sighs> you know, just waiting for chemo to begin and going through all the little things that they have to get taken care of before that starts. Healing, for one, since she's been through quite a few surgeries in a short span of time. But um, thank you for asking, yes. Remember Kenzie, if you would, please. General Scott. I'll let all of our little munchkins settle, and, um, and then we'll just take a moment. Father, perhaps the most truest sign of when we belong is during joys and concerns. It is that time when we do hear each other's concerns and, and prayers and, and in part suffering for others as we understand that 
that principle of belonging one to the other in community, in community as we lift up the Allendyke family, as we lift up the Baker family, that even though they may not live in our proximity, they're our family. They're part of our family. They're an extension of who we are. And those that are closest to us as we lift up Ron and Stephen and, and John and, and even, you know, just those people that are not mentioned, but we still remember them. We still hold them. They hold that place in our heart. I think that's the, the beauty of this word that was presented today is the diversity within the, in, the inclusion. It is, it is so tremendously powerful when we remember that what is important to me, and I'm praying for that person, may not be with someone else's God, but you hear it equally because we all belong to Christ in Christ alone. So Father, hear our prayers. Hear those spoken and unspoken prayers. And keep us mindful that this prayer is not just for today. Just as healing is not like that, but that healing continues. Let our prayers continue just as we continue daily in the prayer that you taught us when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Let's stand and sing, or let's have the choir come forward and sing, Jesus, Savior, Lord, I adore you. Sorry, choir. Someday I'll get this right.
Thank you. Bye, Harry. Well, they're going down. Let us all stand and sing, Here I Am, Lord. Answering that call of, is it I, Lord? That answer is, looks different for every one of us. It might look like an exercise group, or it might look like a group of young ladies who get together and decide we need still another group of ladies meeting. It might be men who finally say, yeah, I'd like to do something different. I'd like to make a change in the lives of other men. But here's the basis of it. It is on God's love through the redemption of Christ and the moving of the Holy Spirit that all things are done, that we raise our hand and say, is it I, Lord? Go in peace. <laughs> 